Hello and welcome to New Light Baptist Church of Harlem, New York. Our senior pastor is the Reverend Bobby Lewis, and we are so glad you stopped by to join us today. We are about to go into service right now. So, come on in. I'm excited to be alive this morning. And I thank God for putting breath in my body this morning. I didn't just wake up. He actually woke me up, and I'm excited about that. I have um, another reason to be excited. This week um, is my birthday week. I am going to be entering another decade. I'm going to be 70 years old. And there was a time when I thought that I was not going um, to reach that age. Uh, Years back, I had gotten so sick, okay, and I went through a season of um, illness. And I didn't, like, give up on myself, but I was a little doubtful about how things would turn out. But, um, But God, actually... And it's also exciting for me because um, you all know that my sister Grace last year went through a whole season of illness. Well, um, she and I share the same birthday. And there was a time when she didn't think that she was going to be celebrating. So on Friday, the two of us, thank you Jesus, will be (laughs) celebrating (laughs) our birthdays. Um, We're going to spend it together like we always have. It's never been a problem for us. You know, um, people used to say, well, you guys are not mad you have the same birthday. We didn't care. I mean, I was, I'm the only birthday present that she can account for after all these years, okay? (laughs) She's two years older than me, but um, we both are so grateful for the place we both are in our lives right now. Are our lives perfect? (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, but we're just grateful that um, God spared the two of us to share another birthday. She's still sick. You know, she's going through her cancer issues, but she's doing much better. She's so grateful for life. And those of you that get her post every single day, you can see that she is on it, she's on top of it, and she's blessing everyone. Now, um, today's lesson is called The Perfect Vineyard. It comes out of Isaiah 5, which um, Pastor Bobby is going to be preaching on um, today. And I just want to read the first two verses. It says, I will sing for the one I love, a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now, you know, anything we do without God will not be perfect. It is bound to be faulty, and it won't always yield the best result. If we have already decided to go outside of God's will, the consequences of our actions are ours alone. We serve a loving and forgiving God who wants to be a part of everything we do. He wants to hear our plans. He wants to be in our lives. But we have to intentionally seek him, surrender everything to him, and then wait on him. We need to be able to hear and discern his voice for his good and perfect will. But if he is not part of the process, our work is in vain. The perfect vineyard to me is inside the will of God. Now before we pray, I just wanna read John 15, beginning at verse five. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so it will be even more fruitful. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. 
it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So be careful what you think of as perfect if God isn't in it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord, for giving us the breath of life. We praise you, Lord. We worship you because of who you are. You are God alone, and you alone are God. So would you just come into this service right now, Father God? Would you be with us as we lift up songs of worship to you, Father God? We love you, Lord, and we praise you, and we thank you for all that you are and all that you do for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are coming to this house and gathered in his name to worship him. Amen? Amen. So as we uh, enter into this time of praise and worship, feel free to either stand to your feet Rest yourself in your seat, but whatever you do, make sure that you are here and it's just you and God, amen? Not worrying about what's around you, what it looks like, what it sounds like, but just to have this time with him, amen? We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have
sing along. If you can manage it, get to your feet.
Stephanie E. Farmer, and yes, the E does matter. And if you care why, we can chat about it. It's a testimony thing. Um, but um, I'm Deacon Steph, and it is my privilege to be before my fellow image bearers this morning. Um, I encourage you to receive that. You are an image bearer of God. And I am your minister on duty this week. If you need to reach out, please do so. If I could just minister that to you, and I know I said it the last time I was minister on duty, but I'm telling y'all. Reach out to somebody if you need something, okay? Um, the way that you can get a hold of me is via email, sfarmer at nlbcnyc.org. One more time, sfarmer at nlbcnyc.org. And I am, I do have the honor of reading our corporate passage. It's one of my favorites, y'all, like for real. Um, so Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6, if you could turn with it, turn or click with me, be advised, there is a call and response moment that I'm going to do with y'all. So, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm. I don't know about y'all, but I feel that. <laughs> um, yes, I've read it a lot of times, but I feel it, and so I just encourage you to let God minister to you. His word is living, okay? Verse 5, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Now, if you have it, whatever version you have, verse 6 is the one we are reading together. Surely, 
goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God bless and keep you, Deacon Steph. If you need prayer, please reach out. Amen. This is the point in our service where we um, corporately pray for the world. We pray for our neighborhoods. And we pray for our loved ones. Um, we'd like to pray for all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. I want to continue to pray for Monica Santiago and her family. Um, she lost her aunt Rachel um, last week. Okay, and all those that we know about and that we don't know about. Let's just keep them all in prayer. Let's continue praying for our world. We're torn apart by war and pride and greed. Let's just pray that God will bring peace and justice to our land. Um, let's pray for our elected officials, Father God. Um, they need the Lord, okay, because things are chaotic and they can only get worse if God is not in the mix. So just keep them all in prayer at every level of legislation. Um, we wanna pray for people who are struggling with mental illness and addiction. Mental illness is a tragedy and it's real, okay? We have people dying because of mental illness, people killing other people because of mental illness. And um, we just want to keep in prayer that um, there would be empathy for these people and resources that they can access. Um, we want to continue to pray for Mother Anna and Dina, Deacon Linda Burstyn, who's recovering from her back surgery, Roy Alexander DaCosta, Michael Dade, my sister Gracie Dickerson. Christopher Gonzalez, Louis Jerez, Frank Jerez, Mother Amy Lambert, Shirley Brown, and her husband Errol McLean for healing, Mother Ariant and Elder Wes Marcelin, Cheryl Martsman, Monique McDaniel, Maya Robinson, Michael Robinson, Latrice Sturdivant, who's recovering and she's here. <laughs> Jamala Tyson, Mother Mary Williams. We wanna pray for our marriages, um, the holy covenant that God put in place, that we would stay the course, stand on ground and let nothing from this world separate it. We wanna pray for our youth there's so much going on in the world that's affecting their lives, and we want to make sure that they stay strong. They can go to the Lord with things that are on their minds and things that are affecting their lives. We want to also pray for our senior citizens. Father God, we come before your throne of grace for all of these people, Father God, and all of these issues, Father God, that we have lifted up to you, Lord God. There's nothing too difficult for you. Father God, and I just ask that you would do what only you can do, Lord, in all these situations. Father, we bless your holy name. And we know how much you love us. And it's not that you don't see what's going on, Father God. You have your perfect plan in place for all of these situations, Lord God. And we will wait on you. Because, Lord, we know, we know that there's nothing that you will not handle for us. Father God, we lift all of these prayer requests up to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Changed today? Oh, I don't believe it. Yeah, I've been changed. Anybody been changed today? You know, this change happens not because you come to church. Doesn't happen because because you stop uh, chewing snuff. Don't have all that stuff. I don't know who tricked you and told you that if you stop doing this or stop doing that, then God will move. No, God will come get you right where you are. And say, Lord, because he already knows he wouldn't have to die on the cross if you could change yourself. Why, why would he give his only begotten son to die if you could change? He says, you're going to be the same old person two weeks from now. But he says, if you would trust me. And, and, and I don't like when people come and use my text, Paul or Joseph. Just use all my scriptures. But that passage the John the 15 can we start there really quick this is not where my sermon starts but I'm gonna mess it up because she started it John the 15th chapter can you pull that up real quick because this is my funeral passage I always use this in funerals because uh we come to funerals and we always see those people laying in the casket no goodness well we ain't got nothing to say about them we ain't got nothing to say because they have tried their whole life to fix something they cannot fix themselves. You know, that's why I always want mental illness on this, on this prayer request. We want it always there because we all have a form of mental illness. Now, all the brilliant people don't, don't agree with me, but we all have a form of mental illness because when we walk out of our door, the first thing we do is look at other people. No, no, let's go back in the house. Before we leave, we stand in that mirror. And the question we're asking ourselves in that mirror, what are they going to say when they see me looking like this? Are they going to say I'm thin? Are they going to say I'm fat? Are they going to say I'm cute? Are they going to say, whoa, look at her. She a dime piece. You know, and if you hear that, you'll be like, <laughs> are they talking about me? But if somebody say, what she got on? Your whole world is crushed. You literally go to work based on what people think about you. You know, if a thousand people say your hair is banging and one person with a lopsided wig on look at you and say, what's wrong with your hair? Now, now her wig lopsided. What's wrong with your hair? It, when it's mental illness. It messes with us. And the whole day we are thinking, Mess. Listen, but when you would say, Lord, take over. I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of living on other people's thoughts. I'm tired of living what, what, what other people got. They got this. So I'm, don't you know people have canceled going to school because they say, I don't have clothes worthy of school. What are they going to sit and listen? It starts in school, but it's, it comes up to today. If I go in some of y'all's houses right now, 
there's about 17 dresses on the bed. What am I wearing today? I can't wear that. Oh, what about this? And it's not because of you, because if, if that's because if you look at COVID, all of us sat around in, in sweats, you know? So it's, we're not trying to impress us. We try and impress what other people think, you know? And uh, Pastor Charmaine coming with her little, her little funky boots on this morning. I said, what? What they for? You know, I don't know. <laughs> but, but all of us, you know, oh, but let me tell you this. What God says, you can't do anything without me. You're going to destroy yourself. And your wages at the end will be a big fat zero. Because you've been pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, working and working and working, trying to make yourself something that you can't do. And this 15th chapter covers the whole vineyard sermon today. And that fi- go to the 15th chapter. Somebody start reading. At, just read five, somebody. Do you have it, Latrice? Go ahead, read it out. I want to read it out loud. Come on, Paula. Listen at them 70 year old chords. Come on. I am the vine. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, what can you do? You can do nothing. And that nothing, this is where we get messed up. We think when God says nothing, it means what we can see. And if I know, I did this by myself. Look, I just bought me a brand new luxury vehicle. I did that. I went back to college. I did that. I did. But guess what? Somebody just died in my building today. No, Tuesday. My friend of 12 years. You know, she's been in this building 62 years. I've only been there 12, but she's my neighbor. We are so close. And uh, about a mm, year ago, two years ago. She says, um, they gave me a crazy diagnosis. And I said, what does that mean? She said, I don't have family. Don't have. She said, well, truthfully, you the only buddy I got. And I said, well, that's a good buddy to have. And I said, I'm going to walk you through this. I'm going to push you. I'm going to be nudging you. And I, I, I'm not going to let you sit behind that door. I know what you do. You are always going. You're going to see a show. You're always going there. You're going there. Keep going until God says it's over. And uh, she was telling me I w- was in her house. She said, you see that? I got that when I was this. And you see those? That I bought that here. And I bought this. And I bought that. And I got this. See that right there? And she says, today, none of that means nothing. All the accolades, all the stuff, all the luxury car, all the, the minks and the stoves, and the, that stove belongs to my great-grandmother. Look how good it looks. That belongs to my, and this belongs to my, and the day will come when you will look at that closet and it will be closing in on you. Because you have invested everything in that. And God says, that's when you'll see nothing. Every, without me, you can do nothing. And I was at Calvary just four days ago, hanging out with her. And I said, uh, I went to, by your house. She said, I don't want to hear about that. I don't care. I'm leaving. I'm out of here. She said, I should give you a credit card so you can run up one of these credit cards. <laughs> I said, at least you got, at least you got the joy in the side of you. She said, I, I hear what you said. You've been talking to me all these years, and don't think I ain't been listening. I've been writing stuff down in my head. She said, I already know. I can. You told me the to death talk a thousand times. I'm just gonna close my eyes and I'll be gone. It's gonna be, it'll be before you even know it. You're gonna close your eyes and what you experience. You're gonna be like, why did I waste so much time doing nothing? but it'll be too late. And I, you, the day is going to come when death is going to unzip you. Because this, ain't, this is just a robe of, of, of mud. And that soul is going to come up and you will look down on your life and say, what was it all for? Not me, because guess what? Every day I'm giving it to God. Every day I don't trust Bobby Lewis. 
I don't trust Bobby Lewis. I don't trust Bobby's testimony. I don't trust nothing about Bobby Lewis because I already know what he wants to do. But every day I'm looking at this 15th chapter, you know, and say, Lord, Lord, I want to abide in you. And how do we abide in him? It's two words. It's two words. And God says all these things. You can do none of this without two things. He said one is, one starts with an S, an F, but it's not faith. Who, who said it? What's the first one? Prayer and fasting. These things come by prayer and fasting. That's why I love our corporate scripture today. Because in one part of Matthew, he says, when you pray, pray in this order. He doesn't say, don't say these words, but this is the topic. You should pray, you know. And he said, can we go to, uh, so let's go to that really quick. Y'all, thanks, Paula. Messed my whole sermon up. Go back to, uh, go to Psalm. Uh, um, uh, this is what David, David, you, David wrote this. He wrote this beautiful song. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And, 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 and the shepherd of sheep is the one who protects the sheep, pulls them, your rod, boom, and your staff, boom, it comforts me. Now, comfort, rod ain't never comfort nobody because a rod is, pow, come back here. Get away from that. But that's comfort when you know it's extending your life. And a staff comforts me. If you prepare a table before me, now you're about to see our passage today. God preparing a table before you in the presence of my enemies. And sometimes, it's a lot of times in the Old Testament, God used the enemies to get you back to the place you're supposed to be. And where's the place you're supposed to be? Does anybody know? In his presence. Because I walk away, once I got it good, you know, like we, we've been on several cruises uh, since I turned 40. We've been on several cruises. And sometimes when you're on cruise, you don't, ain't no need, you don't, you don't want to pray because everything is going so good. It's not until that ship says, what was that? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Don't I, won't it bring you back down to your knees? That's why God says, the reason I need your enemies, because sometimes I need them to trip you up, so they'll trip you to the right position, right at my feet. And guess what? I'm going to tear those enemies up. He says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Don't you worry about, and some of us are to this day mad at people. Is what they did to me. Pastor, you wouldn't believe what my mama, my own mama. And, and I, also, I also like to ask, how much of that did God allow to get you back in position? You know, and today, uh, last week we talked about, we were in Isaiah chapter 4. And 4 and one thing you're going to see in Isaiah, he keeps jumping around time-wise. It can get, get, get confusing because in chapter 4 of Isaiah last week, he started, uh, look at 4, uh, uh, the first verse. It says, in that day, this, this is uh, for verse 1, he says, in that day, and that day was in the day of, uh, this is when the Babylonians came and took them uh, took them away and he explained that the women would be uh, would, would be in terrible condition though it would be a horrible place but then look at verse 2 it says in that day the branch of the lord will be beautiful and glorious and the fruit of the land will be the pride and glory of the uh, uh, survivors in Israel. So in the first in that day is 700 years before the second in that day. So he's jumping back and forth. But in chapter 4, 
verse 2, that's what we call the millennial kingdom. He's jumping ahead. And on Wednesday night, I'm going to put up um, a, a, a timeline of when my friend Marlene uh, passed away. She went from, the Bible says she, she's absent from the Bible, from the body. Paul said it. Where, where is she? She's pre uh, immediately present with the Lord. You know, and, and I, I shared last week that my father, when he died, he was on the floor praying. Praying, praying, God, I'm ready. God, take me home. And then mama called me at 3 o'clock and said, I think we lost him. You better be careful. Don't tell God, I'll take you too many times. Because God said, whoop, he went up. He was gone. And there in the floor, he left us a pile of dirt to clean up. Right in my mama's floor, a pile of dirt. Because that's all that was. My father was gone. It's now the shell that held his soul. That's all this thing is that y'all pay, y'all pay millions of dollars to make up artists and millions of dollars to put hair in. It's all dirt. And then from that point, he was absent. His spirit went to be with the Lord. And have you ever seen somebody dead? You already know it. It's just nothing there. It's just like a puppet. And then the, 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 the our, our, uh, our, uh, funeral director Eric came in and said, "Y'all empty the room. Let me get Pastor prepared, Bishop ready, because my family won't let him leave that house. We need some time with him. They wanted to spend some time with that dirt for a couple more hours. So he says, "Y'all come out. Let me let me prepare him." And uh, and they took a picture. Well, I don't want to see that, but I kind of did want to see it. So they took a picture. Eric had put his nice sweater on, and he was on the floor. Just, and they all just jumped on him like he was a teddy bear. And they just celebrated his, his life, what he had given them. And then at one point, Eric says, let's go. Let me take, let me take Bishop. He rolled him out. Didn't put him in a body bag yet because he wanted to see it. And then took him to the door prepared him and took him to the car. And when we saw him in the casket, it was like he was taking a long nap. But let me tell you this, I already know, I already know, absent from the body, boom, he's present with the Lord. And now this body right here is the beginning of the millennial kingdom. He's already, so, so the Bible says we'll be caught up to meet God in the air. And we're going to all, and one day when, when, when the time comes, uh, the Bible says, uh, and those who remain, those who are left, um, that's, this is Thessalonians, uh, but I'm going to tell you where because I want you to listen. Those who remain shall be caught up with them in the sky. For a thousand years, the, the devil will reign on this earth. That's the millennial kingdom. Some theologians believe that we are going to be here not what the Bible told me. The Bible says we will not endure that suffering. We're going to be taken away for a thousand years before we come back again. And God is preparing a new heaven and a new earth. And he'll be preparing the new Jerusalem. Don't get into an argument about Jerusalem because that ain't the Jerusalem God's talking about. That place they fighting over now, that Netan, Benjamin Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu ain't the, the Jew, the Israel that God is coming back for. I, I didn't say that. I'm saying this group of people is not in the special location. I've been there. I went there a thousand times to Jerusalem to walk the Via Dolorosa. I walk those streets. It is a market. It is a money making, uh, 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 what do you call it with the roller coasters and carnival it is an amusement park and then they wanted you to get baptized in the that thing is so muddy and dirty I said like, I ain't getting baptized in that sorry Jesus and he's like this is where Jesus was baptized I said I'm glad because I was baptized in Virginia I'm good and it's so nasty it's so filthy but guess what guess what God ain't coming back for that he is he says there will be a new heaven a new Jerusalem that we're gonna go to and guess who's going to reign in that Jerusalem? Not Benjamin. 
No, the Lord himself. And, and we move to look at four, look at uh, chapter four. And, and don't forget, come to by, in Bible study, I'm going to give you a map. I mean, a, a, a timeline of that of that uh, the end times so look at four uh, number two it says um it says the branch of the lord will be beautiful and glorious and the fruit of the land will be the pride of glow and glory of the survivors in israel see that who's the branch oh yes y'all are smart go go to jeremiah because Jeremiah, he, he breaks this down. Jeremiah 23, uh, f 5 and 6. Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6. And we're going to go through this because Jeremiah is another major prophet. We just started the 16 prophets. So, so Isaiah 1, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, all major prophets. Now, when I say major, minor, don't think that Habakkuk, you know, all of them and, and, and uh, uh, n none of them are less in value, but they just wrote more. It's just long, you know, like Isaiah, 66 chapters. That's long. So uh, 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 Jeremiah 23, look at this, 5. The, day are, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David, this is from the line of David, a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. Look at 6. In his day, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord. Our righteous Savior, Jesus. That's who he is. Okay? So, uh, he, they said th he's going to create fruit. Look at what's being created now. Today, we're in the vineyard. Today, we're in chapter 5. Go to chapter 5, Isaiah, and it says, and it's titled, The Perfect Vineyard. And then, it's like a prophetic uh, uh, parable. It's like a song. It feels like we're reading Song of Songs again or Proverbs. Look at this. It says, I will sing for the one I love a song about the vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a, uh, on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. What does that mean? It means, he, look, look what he said. He says, I gave y'all the best. Gave them the best land, gave them the best, put a watchtower in the middle so you could see what the foxes are coming in and try to, you had everything you needed, but what, what kind of fruit did you deliver? What kind of fruit? He was looking for obedience, service and kindness and love and, and gratefulness. He saw disobedience, came back, rebellion and greed, idolatry, nothing was there. Nothing. And he says, now you dwellers of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could, ha uh, could have been done for my vineyard? God is saying, I gave you everything. You remember when he, they were coming through the, through the wilderness and God says, you're going to live in houses you never built. You're going to have, you're going to have cisterns you never dug. You, I, I'm going to give y'all everything. There is nothing you will not have. But then he got there, and guess what they were doing? They were looking at other people's stuff. They started worshiping other gods. You know how easy it is to worship another god? Is it, is it, can you name another god that we worship? Somebody said what? materialistic things, jobs. 
and like she said, meditate. Well, she just wrapped it up. We worship that stuff. You know, we worship. We will get in a fight on the on the train if somebody step on our Jordans. What what's going on? I mean, look, you go from the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You can't see me? It's like it's like we it's like mentally unstable. We want God so bad. And guess what? We're trying to hold on to God, but you don't have the strength to hold on to God. What you got to say is, Lord, here am I. I'm a wreck. And if you don't walk with me today, I'm about to jack this up. That's what God, God wants to hear real stuff. And every day you're praying. Every, I started my new one, uh, 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 Urban Academy class. Oh, we are having so much fun because we're starting right at the beginning of six books. We'll be together for three years on and off. And it's six books, but it's talking about the reality of Jesus, what he had to do, where he had to walk, the topography, what was the land like. And it is so good, and he had to pick disciples. Guess who two of the disciples were? Somebody said Judas. Matthew was one. Can you give me some descriptions of Matthew? What did Matthew do? He was a tax collector. He was a wonderful Christian tax collector. No, he was not. He was cutthroat. Tax collectors worked for the Roman government who oversaw the property they lived on. Rome was in charge. Rome was in charge, and he took he collected taxes from his people, the Jewish people. He would take their taxes. Give me that. Boom. Overcharge them. Pocket that money. Take a little bit more. Put it in his pocket. And then, here, Mr. Rome, and give them. He stole twice from his people and the Roman government. But yet, when Jesus saw him, he said, two words, two words, two words. He, two words, two words. He said, Stop treating people like that. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. He said, follow me. See, if you would have to tell more of your people, stop talking to all, now, I want to be a Christian. What do I need to do? First of all, you got to stop wearing them tight clothes. And then second of all, you got to stop. And then you need, we give a whole list. God said, Jesus said two words. But we don't feel confident enough. Tell them to follow me. We don't feel confident enough. But guess what? Look at Jesus. Jesus said follow him. But when Jesus got to the place where he was about to die on the cross, he doubted. He says, I want to do this. Even Jesus, he was sweating. What? He was, his, his, Blood was coming out of sweat. He was so stressed. But then he just fell back on his normal habit. Not my will, but your will be done. Don't do what I want to do, Lord, because what I want to do is, hmm, I want to kick them in the teeth. How I'm dying for y'all and y'all throwing stuff at me. Really? I'm up there. I, come, come here. Mm. And he had the power to say, snap and they all be dead. But he said, not my will. Your will be done. Every day we're fighting for the will of God. But God is coming. He said, I'm coming back. I don't want to come to your house and see no, there's no fruit there. What happened? You don't know, this hard, Lord. You don't know what I've been through. And these people, them liars, we got liars to go to our church. We got, and like that Pastor Bobby, I can't stand him. You know, you give us another pastor, then things can be better. Have you ever told God, give me another husband, it'll be better. Give me some more children. See, if I had good children, <laughs> but these old knuckleheads you gave me, you know, we all, what, what, listen, even what did Adam say? It's that woman. Lord, that's why I'm hiding from you because that woman you gave me. And what God is saying is, if you spend time with me, like y'all started in the cool of the desert, walk together every day, then the, then the serpent wouldn't even get your attention. 
The serpent wouldn't have power when you spend time with me. That's why I said, if you don't have a prayer life, I guarantee you, you about to have some trouble. And trouble is not jail. See, that's the thing. Y'all think trouble is, at least ain't on drugs. At least ain't in jail. That's why, that's why Jerry Springer was the top of the ratings for years. Because we went there to see people worse than us. That, woo, Lisa ain't like that. Ain't that bad. But see, God created you to do something only you can do. Ooh, I heard somebody say that at men's retreat. He said, God chose me to do something on this earth that only I could do. So when he comes back, when it's not done, nobody will get blamed but me. And God says, not only do I give you things to do, he says, I've already done it in advance. All you got to do is walk in it. Be obedient. Wake up. Keep showing up. Keep going. Keep coming. Keep showing up. Keep going. Every day do this. Do it over until one day you start seeing the miracles. <laughs> you start seeing miracles around you. And you start hearing people say, thank you. You've been a blessing to my life. And it's not, it's not an ego blessing, but it's a grateful, Lord, that's you. God, that's you. That's not me. That's you, God. Lord, keep on fasting and praying. Every, like right now, this fast is about to end, y'all. The 30th is going to be here in no time. And then we, 5 o'clock, the 5 will be over. Then what you do, go back to what you've been doing. Doing the same thing. Expecting different results, mental illness. But here, here, God says, what I looked for wasn't there. And I did everything, but the one thing, the fruit I looked for is not there. And then he has a series of woes. He has a series of woes. Woe, there's like six woes. You know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over those on Wednesday because the woes that Jesus talk about are, like, look at one of them. One is, woe to you who adds house to house. I'm at number, I'm at verse 8. No, I'm not. I am? Yes, I am. I'm at verse 8. It says, woe to you who add house to house and join field to field till no space is left and you live alone in the land. The Lord Almighty has declared in my hearing, surely the great house, the great houses will become desolate. The fine mansions left without occupants. A 10 acre vineyard will be produced, will produce only a bath of water. He's saying it's going to be so horrible that all the stuff you build won't even produce that much. And he says, what you're doing is, and when he says house to house, what people used to do is take people's land. You know, there was a, there was a, a year of jubilee where the, when the year of jubilee comes, I think that every seven years, everything you borrowed or lent has to be forgiven. That's a year of jubilee. Everything is forgiven. All the land, you go back to your markers. Because what people are used to doing is taking advantage of people, give me your land. Because when they came through the wilderness, God gave everybody, Benjamin, Naphtali, all the tribes had land. I showed that, I showed that clip, uh, that, that, uh, that uh, map, thank you, on lap, two Wednesdays ago. Everybody had their land from the top, uh, from the trees of Mamre all the way down to Egypt. Everybody had their land. But what they did was, if you had a rough time, uh, uh, um, uh, she would say, give me six acres of your land and I'll, and I'll give you some bread. My children can't eat. Give me six acres, I'll give you some bread. And out of desperation, I'll give you my six acres. And before you know it, her land is gone. And, I'm ta and now she's on my land working for me. And that's how greed happens. And God says, woe to you who don't return land on the year of Jubilee. Because God says, everybody should have enough. 
You know, there's going to be some people in trouble when Jesus comes back because all your trillionaires, billionaires, cagillionaires, gagagillionaires, all that money, guess what they want? More. Oprah wants more. You can't even pay poor people. You can't even make somebody a millionaire because you want more. People that work for you, give them, give them money. No, no, you hold on to it because you have become what you own. And what God is saying is, release it. I'm going to bless you beyond anything you can imagine. I'm going to close with this. I know a lot of people say, what? Pastor Bobby, y'all been in the Old Testament all these years? <laughs> I said, we started November. When is a, when is a, Selena's uh, uh, anniversary. When did Selena get married? November, I think it was 2010. And so I know that's the anniversary because we went to Florida for the marriage and then to get married and then I came back here and we started in Genesis. So their anniversary always reminds me how long we've been walking through the Bible. We started in Genesis. We just get into Isaiah. And what year, what, what is this? <laughs> this December 24. And somebody say, you've been in the Old Testament that long? But Old Testament is under the law. How do you really, we live under the law. How are you, like, like a tithing and all that stuff. That's under the law. We should be living in the New Testament. Under, I said, but don't you get it? The Old Testament is telling you what God expects in the new. He's, it's just all the, the prophets telling us what's going to happen. So you got to go back to the old and see the character of God, who he is, what he demands, so that now when we get to the New Testament, guess what giving is? It says give everything. <laughs> it says give, and then when you give, give it how? Cheerfully. Give it above and beyond. So, okay, you want to get rid of tithes? We're going to be in trouble. But let's keep the form of how God set it up. And it's not about a curse or blame. And I don't like using it. I don't like, because I know when, I know some tithing uh, and, and, and you bring preachers to your church who know how to raise the offering. And they will, by the time they finish the offering, you'll be like, you will have to give your t-shirt and your socks. You know, because they give you, they get you, God gave you what you will give back to him. He says, if you give, I will multiply it over, 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 over. And you start digging. And I heard one, one pastor say, bring me your rent. You trust God? You trust God? Bring your rent to the house and you trust God. And I say, that's called theft. I can't trust God with somebody else's money. <laughs> Why don't I just get somebody's purse and bring it up there? When she turns around and steal somebody's purse and bring it to the offering plate. You know, and it's like it goes beyond who God is. God is so awesome that I don't have to think about those things. I already know what God expects. And I want to live a life that God expects so that I don't ever have to worry about living outside of his will, you know. And uh, today I want to uh, I want to just pray because uh, because there are so many people living in fear, you know. Because if you look at the news, whoa, you know, uh, uh, I saw somebody yesterday saying that there is a group planning on uh, uh, genocide in all of New York and blah, 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 blah. And, and people are like, oh, what are we going to do? And these are the same people who don't read the Bible. Because God says there are going to be wars and rumors of war. But he says, I am the God that never changed. I am the God that cast every star into the sky. I have named and counted every last one of them. I know you by name. I know every hair on your head. And if you don't build up faith in God so that you can go to him when you pray, 
you know, uh, we were in the, I was with Mama Amy last night, and uh, <laughs> Mama Amy's face, she looked at me like, when is God coming to get me, Pastor? <laughs> she saw me, she says, hi, I appreciate you. And she's fading away. She's, she um, has not eaten. And, uh, but her spirit is just like anticipating. Anticipating what's next, you know. And, and I looked at her and I, we start, I took her hand. And I was just holding her hand. And she was laying every once in a while. She would look over at me. She knew that when she was sweeping in front of the church. Oh, yeah, she used to get up for everybody and would start at one end of the block and just start sweeping, getting all the dirt up before the saints came to worship. She knew then what she knows right now. This ain't nothing new to her. She already knew, you know, the first one that came to me when everything happened at Central was her. She says, Pastor Bobby, God is in control. God, nobody can say God like her. God is in control. And she's laying in that bed looking at me like, I ain't waiting on a nurse. I ain't waiting on no medicine. I'm waiting on God. I ain't waiting on you. Oh, it's you. She looked over like a little disappointed. Oh, I appreciate you, but you ain't who I'm waiting on. And let me tell you, if you don't get there now, if you don't get there now, if God is not what you, what you desire now, if God, everything you desire won't mean a thing when you get there. It won't mean a thing. All the stuff you fighting over, all the stuff you ain't talking to your cousins over, you're mad at because they stood, they bought, they bought six, they bought six hundred and thirty dollars for me, and they until um, they give my money, I ain't got nothing to do with them. That money don't mean that's one pill when you got cancer. <laughs> one pill. <laughs> and what God is saying, get it right now, because you don't know what the journey's gonna. And if you want me to walk with you to the end of this journey, get right now. Don't wait. Don't wait. You won't, you won't be able to make it through this. That, that is, you won't be able to make it if you wait. But right now, Lord, take over. God, take over. God, I give you permission to take over. Nothing is important. God, I don't want anything to matter but my relationship with you. I want to trust you from this day to my last day. I want to trust you. Anybody want God to take over? <laughs> oh, Father, even now, you know what we're going through. God, you know about the mental illness. Lord, you know about the, 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 the desires we have. You know about the, the addictions. Lord, you already know Jesus. And today we just surrender so that when you come back to see our vineyard, you will see much fruit not because of us, but because we surrendered ourselves into your hands. And you said, if we trust you, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. So have your way in my life. Produce fruit today, Lord. Produce fruit today, Lord. To the overflow, Lord, so that my neighbor's neighbor will see fruit, Lord.
They will experience my life that you have created. And when they ask me, how do you do this? And I'll say, every day I have to surrender to God. Every morning I get up and say, take over God. God, protect me from me. Protect me from Bobby Lewis. Protect me. And then teach me. Teach me your word. And then use me for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Have your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up mother. We lift up our mother to you, Lord. Deliver her in the name of Jesus. Healing, Lord. God, would you go to her side, Lord, and heal in the name of Jesus, Lord. I don't know why. I don't know why you've extended. Maybe it's for me, God. Maybe it's for me. Maybe you had her there last night for me, God. I learned so much in those moments with her, God. You are talking to me the whole time. Are you ready, Bobby? Are you ready? To trust me, Lord. Lord, touch in the name of Jesus. Every procedure we have this week, touch in the name of Jesus. Every doctor, every nurse that has to touch our bodies, Lord. You take over in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Have your way. Have your way. And God, I thank you. I thank you. I was at the doctor. I was at that hospital bed, Lord. And Lord, there were days when I didn't think we would have Paula Joseph. Lord, there were days when I sat at her bedside and I didn't know what was going on. But God, I thank you that Friday she'll be 70 years old. <laughs> thank you for allowing her to trust you. Thank you for allowing her to trust you in the darkest times, Lord. In the darkest, scariest times of her life. Thank you for letting Gracie trust you, Lord. So many times I wonder what would tomorrow hold for Gracie. But today, Lord, she's getting ready for Friday. <laughs> you are God. And if we would put our trust in you, there is nothing you won't do. Have your way, everyone sitting in this room. Have your way right now. Speak to their hearts. Deliver and set them free in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We love you, God. We love you. We love you. I love you, Jesus. Anybody love them today? I love you, Jesus. Tell them you love them. I love you, Jesus. We love you, God. We surrender today. We turn it all over to you, God. Give us strength. Give us strength to make it through. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Come on. Y'all stand. Let's stand together. Oh, my God. I don't please come Tuesday. And I'm going to put up some charts for Tuesday. But most of all, like I said, Wednesday, yes. Uh, but most of all, uh, uh, keep each other in prayer. Thank God we had a beautiful prayer meeting on last Wednesday. Woo! God is just moving, and he is, he is using us mightily. Uh, don't forget, uh, Sister Deacon uh, Stephanie is our minister on duty this week. So if you want to, uh, uh, somebody to talk to, and please reach out to her. Amen? Come on, let's go in peace. Father, as we leave this place. Don't let us leave your presence. Go with us. Go ahead of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you.